Cam McClellan. Hello, Lewison. Michael Beresford. Welcome back to our guest WOD series featuring <laughs> Michael Bozza Beresford. The Boz Magic series. Um, in, in our business, um, most of the people in our business own more than six properties. All of us own more than six properties. In Australia, there was, there's 23, 24 million people. 2.2 million, something like that, own an investment property. How many own more than two? 900,000. How many own more than two? Very few. <laughs> About the ATO says in Australia around 15,000 people own more than six properties. So what is it that we've done differently than the majority of other people who want to be property investors that buy one or two? What stops them duplicating and get more than six? Because let's be honest, you need more than two properties to be financially secure. So I want Michael to go through the key thing that three of us did and the majority of other um, you know, team members that we've got working for us have done to achieve more than six properties. And this is probably the key thing that most people want to think about. Um, Edo's one of my uh, close mates from uh, school group, has suddenly realised he may be worthwhile um, selling his primary place of residence and going back and doing what Michael's about to uh, explain now, mate. So rent versus own. Yep. Which is better when you're building a property portfolio? Go nuts. All right. It's definitely better to rent. Um, I'll give you the proof. What you need to understand, guys, are two key things. Cash flow and compound growth. Compound growth is growth on growth on growth over time. Um, write it down, live it, breathe it every day. Cash flow comes down to the return that you get on the money that you spend. And owner occupying a house might be nice, we all do it now, but it's not what we did initially because it takes up too much cash flow. I'll show you what we mean. With an owner occupier property, typically people will spend about 600 grand. And the question that I ask them is when you buy that property, how long are you going to be living in there for? And without doubt, the most common answer is between three and five years. So let's say five. If you buy your own house, every single cent to pay the mortgage and costs comes out of your back pocket. 100% from salary, post tax, so after the government takes their slice, and you're paying principal and interest. Now that's kind of three strikes and you're out. So let's break it down. Boom, boom. Let's look, let's look at the calculations. Oh, you're yeah. yeah, yeah, can you do it? What do you need? But what we're going to do is we're going to do a side by side snapshot on the costs for each and the growth for each. So if you can give me, uh, we do these on average interest rates um, 600 grand times 7%. 42,000? 42,000 a year. Now that's interest alone. Yep. Principal is going to be about 150 a week. Do that in my head. Seven and a half. Seven eight. Seven eight. Eight grand in principle gives us 50 grand a year total cost. Okay. But over that five years, you hope that the property would uh, would grow in value. So let's apply 8%, 600 grand compounding 8% over five years. <laughs> what do you mean saying? <laughs> do you know how to do compounding on that cash? No, I'll just do it. The oh, I'll give it back here, I'll do it. Yeah, what do you do? We've only got a short period of time out on this game. Just, just sing in the background as something. Chop, chop. 881. 881. It's going to be worse later on. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you enough time. Do 450,000, compounding at 8% over five years. Um, 881 is what the property is now worth in five years' time. Minus the 600 you paid for it means that the growth that you've achieved is 281,000. So, that sounds great. People go, oh, I buy a property, I make nearly 300 grand in five years. That's awesome. But you need to look at what it's cost you to get that growth. So, net position, 281,000 minus five years of 50 grand a year in holding costs. It's kind of like your camping trip. It's great taking your mate Cam along, but if it costs you a slab of beer just to have him there. Oh, here we go. There we go. Two. <laughs> Two slabs of beer. The net position, guys, 281 minus 5 lots of 50 is only $31,000. So ask yourself this. If you buy something worth 600 grand, 
and you pay 50 grand a year out of your pocket every year for five years to live in that property and what you made is 31 grand, is that a good financial outcome? No. It's not. Let's look at our side of the table. Say you buy an investment property first. 450,000 is the price and we'll make it apples with apples so it's five years. With an investment property, you've got three sources of money that go towards covering the holding cost. The two main ones are not out of our pocket. They're what the tenant contributes and what the government contributes through the tax benefits. If there is any shortfall, that's what comes out of our pocket. And as you know, worst case scenario is 100 bucks a week. So that means that it costs you worst case five grand a year to hold this property. Okay, the rest is paid by these guys. So let's look at growth. At 8% on 450,000, out 660, 660. Minus the 450 that you paid, gives you 210 as the, uh, as the growth figure. The net position, therefore, is your 210 minus five years of 5K. Now, over time, your salary goes up, so you get more tax benefits. The rent goes up. So really, by year three, this 5,000 a year is zero, but let's assume that your rent and your salary never change. 210 minus 25, 185 is the resulting net position. So as you can see guys, you're six times better off on a side-by-side -side comparison initially. You still have to live somewhere? You do have to live somewhere, so let's throw that in. Rent to live. Now, if you were going to buy, if you were considering buying a house for 600 grand, what would be a really nice place that you'd like to rent? What would that cost you? 600 a week. 600 a week. I thought rent money was dead money. According to the builders, because they want to sell you a house to live in, where you upspec it, you make them a lot of money. It's the best money you'll ever spend, provided you put the balance elsewhere. 600 per week cost you 30 grand a year to live in that property that you're renting. So what we need to do guys is a snapshot on cash flow. That's what it comes down to. Cash flow is key. On this side of the equation, how much cash flow is coming out of our pocket? 50 grand. Over here, we've got 5,000 to hold the property and we've got 30,000 in rent. The difference is then 15 grand. Now, what do you think we do with this 15,000? Hold, buy some more property. Buy shoes. Do both, guys. Life is for living. Buy shoes, go on holidays, and buy some more property. So why don't we say five grand gets you a nice wardrobe every year and a, uh, and a week away somewhere? So that's on lifestyle and 10 grand goes towards buying more property. Now, if each property costs you 5,000 worst case to hold, if you've got another 10,000 in the kitty, that's another two properties. This is really where compound growth comes in, guys. So, if that gives a scenario of three properties in total, we have three lots of 450, that gives us three lots of 210 as the growth, and three lots of 185 as the net position. 185 times 3, 45 or 600, 555. 555. 555 is the net position when you look at a side by side comparison, dollar for dollar, out of your pocket. So, so you're, you're saying 31,000 against 555? Hang on, you've got to take off 30 a year to live. So let's take 150 of that. No, that's already, that's already taken into account. Mm -hmm. yeah. This 15,000 surplus cash flow is every year. So guys, if you want a $15,000 pay rise and you want to be nearly 20 times better off, that's what you do. Rent somewhere really nice in a location that you'd like to live. For Cam it was Elwood, for me it was Port Melbourne. Oh, where were you? Under a bridge. Under a bridge. 
<laughs> that would have been able to buy more property. Bottom line is, guys, return on investment. Spend as little as possible to maximise the growth as possible. Thank you, Michael. You're welcome. It is. Sell your house. <laughs>